we are going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, Ms. Rosie, if you would please take the roll. Okay, Josh Altum. Here. Linda Rhodes. Here. Chad Wendell. Here. Mayor will be joining us in a few moments. Okay. Well, like, did he say he was logging in now or? No, he. I still haven't received okay. anything further. I was going to say, we'll just wait for him if he's logging in right now, but no. we'll go ahead and keep going. All right. Well, today we're uh, going to be doing some interviews for different board positions that we have. Uh, and uh, we have Mr. Myron Jones here. Um, I guess, sir, if you would just give us a little background on yourself and why you why you want to be a part of uh, the different boards that you've asked to be a part of. Wow. Um, I recently retired uh, from uh, I was a chaplain at the Medical City of Arlington for 10 years. Uh, before that, I uh, reloc relocated to Dallas-Fort Worth to pursue training in hospital chaplaincy from Austin, Texas, where I was on staff at Mount Sinai Baptist Church serving as a senior adult pastor there. Uh, before that, I had retired from the IBM Corporation where I served for 30 years uh, in various capacities, uh, field sales, product development, and business partner relations. Been in the Kennedy area for about 10, 12 years, and uh, just trying to find a way to contribute to the community. And so I had uh, got some information from someone, perhaps it was my wife, I don't know who, uh, that suggested that there were uh, board positions um, or places where I could serve uh, in, in Kennedy through the boards that you have. Uh, I guess you've got uh, four different kinds of boards, advisory, quasi-judicial, -ju separate entity, and I guess some, some ad hoc capabilities that city council has. And so I just basically threw my name in a hat. I uh, was looking to find a place of service, uh, looking at the documentation that's on your city website. Uh, we uh, just trying to find places that uh, I can plug into the community and be of service. Excellent, we'll uh, start with some questions. Linda, would you like to go first? You're muted. Linda, Linda, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry, um, that's hard to get used to still. Um, hello, thank you for applying. We appreciate your, uh, you know, your effort there that uh, you have an interest. That's where it all begins. I appreciate that. Um, I noticed that you have three different boards that you're interested in. One is the Board of Adjustment and uh, the BBA, Building Board of Appeals and the EDC and the planning and zoning. Out of those three boards, do you have a more of a preference one over another? Uh, probably the planning and zoning, is, it, it looks like it is a position that would better fit someone that's new. The others look like you've really got to have it, an in-depth perspective of what's, how the city operates and things that are required. Okay. Okay, that's really all I have right now. Thank you. All right. Josh, you got some questions you'd like to ask? No, I think I kind of got the same. I think he and I spoke on the phone, if I'm not mistaken, and he discussed P and Z. So um, I don't have any questions for him. Do you have any questions um, regarding any of these boards um, about what their duties are, what, what's expected, um, when they meet? Well, I spent some time on the website uh, pursuing the different, learning more about the different board and what their responsibilities are. So I don't have any real questions. The, the, the only, uh, I just don't know where you would typically find someone uh, that's newly trying to get involved in, in, in aspects of working on the boards of the city, where you think the best place would be. I'm not necessarily a uh, parks and reg person, but I understand the need. Um, 
Keep me can it get can it that beautiful is sounds interesting, but I don't know if I fit there either. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah, I mean these these are great boards to to be to be interested in, and they're great places to kind of get your feet wet on government structure and, and how things run and operate. And uh, if anybody else has any other questions. All right. Well, I think we've taken some notes and a couple of us had some phone calls with you. So um, thank you for your time. We'll be getting back with uh, all the applicants shortly. All right. Well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, pursue uh, service in the city. Um, if there's a place I can plug in, let me know. Absolutely. Thank you again. Let me tell Mr. John something real quick. I just want to tell him that, you know, don't be upset if we put you as an alternate somewhere because um, a lot of times, some of these people that were alternates and there's a hole, we'll move them up. Um, I started off as an alternate, and I'm sure everybody else on this board at some time started off as an alternate. So I just didn't want you to, if we put you as an alternate, it's still a big responsibility to be an alternate. But uh, I just didn't want you to think that we didn't have anywhere to put you. But uh, Well, alternate positions, I, I suspect, give you a chance to listen and learn. Yes, sir. Yeah. And yep. a lot of times you'll step in and make decisions when somebody that's there can't make it. And, uh, and so we'll need you at those points as well. So I just want to let you know that. And I, so I appreciate you uh, applying for sure. Well, you're understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. We so have, okay. We now have uh, Chad McConnell. Mr. McConnell, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. Thank you. Um, if you would, just uh, take a brief minute and um, tell us who you are and, and about your a uh, little bit. And then uh, I see that you're interested in the, the Planning and Zoning Commission Board. Uh, if you could just give us some background on, on what caught your interest to that board. Okay. Uh, as you know, my name is Chad McConnell. I've lived in the city of Kennedale uh, for about 18 months, but been in the area for about 20 years. Uh, I'm originally from South Carolina. Um, grew up in a town of about 20,000 people where my grandfather was the mayor and my father was the police chief. And so uh, municipal government has been in my blood. And um, so I moved to Texas to work on my master's degree. Um, and we have been here ever since. Uh, I, I've always had, a, had an interest in uh, municipal government and uh, particularly uh, the zoning and planning of the city. And that's what uh, has drawn my interest to that. And uh, having moved into the city, uh, like I say, 18 months, this is my first opportunity to be able to serve and, and use my, uh, my knowledge and my skills as well as learn. Excellent. Well, first, I, I just want to be the first one to say thanks for your application. Um, sometimes it's hard to get people to apply for these things. Um, so we, we are very grateful for everyone because we did get a very large uh, group of applicants this go around and we are very thankful for everybody doing that. Um, we're going to start off with a little roundtable uh, questions and we'll let Mr. Altum go first. Hello, Mr. McConnell. Uh, nice to meet you in person. Um, uh, same things, Chad. I appreciate you uh, applying for these, this board. It, it really means a lot. Um, my question is, do you, how do you, what direction do you see the city going as far as uh, building out? And are you happy with the direction it's going right now? I think the city um, has a lot of growth opportunity because of its location. Uh, and by the fact that um, there, there aren't very many open spaces left between Fort Worth and Mansfield. Uh, so I think the city's moving in the right direction. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's up to the council and the, and, the, and the mayor to decide really what's the best course of action. But uh, I, am, I am happy uh, with the direction of the city. That's why I moved into the city of Kennedale and I, and I want to be a part of that. So you would say that you're for growth or would you like us to kind of halt and look at, look at what's going on? 
I'm I'm for the right kind of growth. Uh, like I say, I think uh, Kennedale has uh, a tremendous amount of potential, um, but I think we also have to decide what is the right growth. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Hopefully these sirens going off in the background aren't too loud. Uh, Miss Rhodes. I don't really have a question, just a comment um, from council member Altum's comment for the prior applicant. I think you were here already at the meeting, so you may have heard. Um, we do have some alternate positions too on the boards and uh, those are just as important sure. as the regular members. So, you know, we do have a lot of applicants. So if you were appointed as an alternate, don't think that that's anything less than a regular member because it's not. Um, you know, you still attend the meetings and, you know, it's possible that there may be a regular member not able to make that meeting. So, you know, they may move that. I think we have two alternate positions, if I'm not mistaken, on that board. So they would choose one of the alternates right. to move them up. So uh, I, I wouldn't see that as anything less than yeah. any other position. Uh, I served on the, the zoning board of adjusters in the city of Burleson. Uh, okay. for almost four years and I started as an alternate on that board. Good okay so appreciate your background very good thank you for applying. Yes ma'am. Yeah that's with the, with an experience on being a BBA experience uh, that's that's good experience to bring the table to PNZ as well because yeah, um, a lot of the insights in PNZ help prevent things in BBA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes they uh, do. <laughs> so uh, excellent. I don't have any additional questions. Do you have any questions about PNZ here? Um, uh, you're aware of the meeting time and schedule, um, uh, attendance requirements, those kinds of things? Yes, sir. That, and that's not a problem for me. Excellent. Okay. I'm uh, going to open it up to everybody one more time. Any final questions, thoughts, comments? Okay, well, we appreciate your time. Uh, just like I, I told the gentleman before, um, we'll be getting the list of everybody that's been selected and put into the different positions out pretty quickly. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Rosie, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Did Billy Don Gilly ever submit an application? Uh, no, but we are just interviewing. I don't believe he did. Let me check. For P and Z? Yeah. I don't believe so. Well, that makes it three spots instead of just two. Okay, that's all I need to know. These interviews are going quick. I can barely even look up the person before we get to them. Okay, there's no one waiting yet. Okay, good. I'm trying to rush to try to hurry up and pull up. No, nope, you got a few minutes. Uh, um, who's next if they were to show up? Uh, let's see. Derek Rubin. Oh, okay. Another potential p and applicant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Derek, let's see. Come on, Josh. Oh, no. Here we go. Let's see. Here we go, Derek. While we're waiting, I have a question as it relates to uh, an alternate member, if we reappoint them um, and there's a vacancy in the regular membership, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but 
moving that alternate to a regular position since they've already served a year or more as an alternate. I personally would prefer anybody that's an alternate that has reapplied to continue. If there's a, a membership position open, uh, unless there's a candidate that's just crazy experienced in something, then that, that person should definitely move up. Um, Cause that's the whole point of an alternate is to gain the experience right. to move into it uh, progression, so. I agree, okay. There he is. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Good. Why you late? Why you late? Why you late? <laughs> late is what I am not. Right. We also have another person on the line. Just make sure uh, if you're you're muted until we we start talking. That way we don't get that loop. but I'm guessing you're Mr. Derek Rubin. Yes, sir. And I don't know why my, um, oh, we're getting a lot of feedback there, huh? Just use either your audio or your, not your phone, dude. So you're saying don't don't use my phone? Are you using the speakers on your computer? No, I, those should be muted. Okay, mute, use okay. those. There we go. There we go. Thank you. There we go. Now, it started off kind of strange because Josh knows you, and I don't know if that's a plus or a minus. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! How do you know Josh? We live in the same development. He's our, our HOA president. Ah, uh, <laughs> craziness. All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, might as well stay ahead of the curve, huh? Uh, first, uh, I just want to thank you for applying. I, for everybody that does apply, it's, it's the first step towards uh, making us a better city. So I do appreciate your interest in everything. Um, Absolutely. To start things off, if you would just give us a little back background on uh, who you are uh, and why P and Z is where you'd like to go. Well, uh, my name is Derek Rubin. Uh, I've been a, a resident of Kennedale since 2014. Moved over from, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, from from Mansfield. Been a been a Texas resident since 2007. Moved from moved here from California. Um, I've been in mortgage in the mortgage industry since 1994, um, and now I'm running a small company called uh, RHL Lending Ruben Home Loans. Um, I chose um, planning and development. I mean, I'm, of course, already being in real estate, I, I it, it just drew an interest from me. Um, I see a lot going on, a lot of growth happening here in in Kennedale. Um, this is where I'm going to be. Um, as a matter of fact, I just, my, my wife wanted to wanted to uh, shop for another house, right? And she was looking all over. And I was like, listen, I want to stay in Kennedale. So I talked her into painting and doing some other stuff. So she's happy here. <laughs> she's settled in. I'm settled. I'm settled in. Um, I get around the city. I, I see a lot, of, a lot of positive things going on, and I just want to be a part of it. Excellent, excellent. Um, again, thank you. Uh, we'll start off with a little roundtable uh, questions, and it looks like Mayor Johnson is joining us. Uh, Linda, since we uh, started with Josh last time, we'll start with you this time. Okay. Welcome. Thank you for attending the meeting, and thank you for applying for a position um, that says a lot, you know, that you do have a, a care and an interest in the city that you live in. Appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm, definitely. One of the things that we've been mentioning to the applicants 
um, is that there are regular members on some boards and some boards have alternates. Um, the alternates play just as important role as the regular members. So with that being said, if you were, if we appointed you to an alternate position on a board, don't think anything less, you know, of that position than a regular member. Um, and I guess that was my only thing. I know Josh has another follow-up question for you. So thank you again for applying. Appreciate it. Definitely. Take it away, Josh. All right. Hey, Derek. Thanks for uh, applying. I appreciate it. Um, uh, kind of the, the last person we interviewed was requesting to be on PNZ as well. And I kind of asked him the same mm -hmm. question. You mentioned seeing a lot of growth. Do you see this growth as positive or do you think we're moving too fast? Um, what's your what's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, right now, me looking from the outside in, I don't I don't think that the I see the, I see definitely growth as being positive. Um, ha having looked at like what the our city budget and things like that look like, um, I think in 2019, 2018, 2019, something like that. We, I think the, the budget was right around 14 million, if I'm not mistaken. We've got a, a nice uh, median income in this city of about 75, a little over 75,000 per household, man. And um, I think that the, the growth is definitely positive. Um, <clears throat> as far as being too fast, I, I, I really can't answer that question right now because I'm not sitting on you guys' side of the fence at this point. Um, I do think I do think uh, growth is, is is definitely important as far as uh, generating revenue and things like that. Um, looking at what we have going on right now, our growth is mostly residential, right? And that means that we, we um, citizens like you and you and and Linda and Chad and Rosie and the rest rest of us <clears throat> are bearing a lot of the burden as far as uh, our with supporting the city as far as our property taxes are concerned. So I, I wanted to kind of join P and Z and kind of see what, what I can do in order to get us to a point where we're, we're generating more business dollars within the, the city. Um, I think that a lot of the companies along the, the business 287 corridor right there, I think they, they're, doing a, they're doing as much as they can. But I think that we, you know, as citizens and, and seeing what we can do to bring more business in, just even to get the people that travel through our city who use our roads and stuff like that to get where they're going, um, to get them to stop just to like have dinner or something like that, to, you know, um, would, would be important. And I think, if, if, I mean, if, if we do that at a pace that we're all comfortable with, not necessarily slow, um, but, you know, to get it up to a point where we are generating money as fast as possible, I think that's important. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, so I know you're in real estate, but um, how uh, knowledgeable are you on zoning regulations and laws currently? I mean, I know that plays into real estate somewhat, but um, have you ever had to deal with zoning and, and, and those types of regulations before? I'm in, I'm in real estate finance. Um, I deal. I do do deal a lot with, uh, with with some builders, but I have not gotten into the uh, zoning piece quite as of yet. Um, to be honest with you all, I would definitely be a baby in that in that area. Um, but I'm a fast learner, right? And um, I'm willing to jump in and, and where I can. When Linda uh, mentioned being an alternate, that doesn't bother me at all because I mean I'm I'm here to learn and work with you guys where I can and uh, offer my input. Excellent. That's great. Um, well, since uh, Mayor Brian Johnson jumped on, do you have any questions, sir? Um, who, am I, who are we interviewing right now? <laughs> Mr. Derek Rubin. No, I, 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 I don't have any questions. I think his, <laughs> nice to meet you. I think his answers are really solid and um, glad he's, uh, he's willing to work and, and apply. Uh, I, I loved all those answers. Excellent. Well, with that said, that's that's all the questions we have for you, unless you have any additional questions for us, sir. Um, we'll be glad to answer those. Well, okay, yeah. Um, 
when are you guys looking to make a decision on this? What, um, what exactly would be the role that I would play in, in supporting uh, the leadership in PNZ and, and things like that? That's a great question. Um, I know that we're moving to get this done, I think this meeting, to make some suggestions on, and not this meeting? No, wait, we're just interviewing this meeting, then we'll make the decision at the next council meeting, which at is the in next, two weeks. There you go. That's the schedule. <laughs> so we're, we're, okay. we're doing deliberations and interviews tonight, and then we'll be actually discussing it and building the uh, actual selections for each board for our next council meeting. So basically in two weeks. Um, okay. Chad, Chad, you've been on, uh, Chad and, and I believe Josh have been both PNZ members. Tell them what to expect out of what you do as a PNZ member. Uh, okay. Um, as far as PNZ goes, it, it's really um, development driven. Uh, you know, the city's not out there just grabbing property clearly and going, let's, let's zone this something. Um, so it's very development oriented. So as the market is pushing things one way or another, it's basically PNC's job to kind of throttle the gate uh, and, and make decisions on, does this fit? Does it go for what we're looking for? Does it match our, our, our comprehensive plan? Does it match our comprehensive goals? Uh, and does it follow the rules of the zoning that's being requested or are they requesting a change of zoning so that it fits some other set of rules and regulations? Um, so kind of your, your position in all of that is to balance the needs of the city and the wants of the developer to go, you know, out of this list of 10 things, we get nine things that we want. So that's pretty darn good. Or we right. get one thing that we want. So that's not so great. <laughs> um, and, and just take well, it from well there. what is the, in, in short, what is, what does that comprehensive plan look like? Uh, what, is, what, is, what would that be? That's, that's a great follow-up question. Um, on our website, there's actually a download for that. And you can uh, go on the City of Kennedale's website and download the comprehensive plan. And it walks you through everything with maps and pictures and, and everything like that. It's a pretty good little document. Okay. Because I think right now, I think I saw where the city is a, a little over six mile, six square miles, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it would be, a, it would be, where we will kind of be cramming things into that that, 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 six, that six square mile. So I'd definitely be interested in seeing what the plan is, the comprehensive plan and things like that, and uh, ma making it where, you know, walking that fine line and, and balance with, you know, satis making the citizens satisfied as well as uh, generating income for the city. Yep, absolutely. And she's on my screen, she's right below you, Melissa Daly. Um, <laughs> If you ever want to talk to her about any of that stuff, she's the person to talk to. She's, she's the over our development department. So um, she can Absolutely. get you all the, the plans like that, the, the comprehensive plan, any zoning regulations you need. Um, and she can point you in the right directions for all that information. All right, thank you. Uh, and I guess without further ado, since we now have our mayor, I'm gonna turn it over to him. All right, so we moving on to our next interviewee. Is that what we're doing? If they are here, uh, uh, Derek, thank you for uh, applying and uh, interviewing, and um, we'll have something for you in a couple of weeks here. Uh, thank you for having me, all. Have a great day. All right, thank you, Derek. Uh, look, we have uh, Marcel Terry. Yes, right here. All right, and so, uh, hello, Marcel. Nice to meet you. My name's Brian. Uh, uh, I'll let the other council members introduce themselves, our Mayor Pro Tem. Chad Wandell, uh, uh, Josh Alton, uh, Linda Rhodes, and uh, Gary Mitchell could not make it tonight. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, we're going to do as Chad had started out a round robin of questions, and then we'll let you ask us questions. Okay. Um, and so I, I I think we started with Linda last time, so we'll start with uh, Josh this time. Okay. Give me just a sec because I'm looking up. So let's see, you're requesting to be on the EDC and the P and Z. Uh, you got either one of those you feel a little stronger about? Not really, not really. Okay. Uh, I'm interested in seeing what's going on around the city of, city of Kennedale. I've lived here for 17 years and uh, I, I tried to get involved uh, earlier, but my traveling uh, kept me from getting involved. Okay. 
and you're fully aware of what those two boards do or or yes yeah, somewhat i had an idea uh back when i thought about applying like maybe eight years ago but then um business picked up for me and i started traveling a lot so okay. well we've also seen quite a bit of growth probably since then as well and okay. that kind of leads me to my next question as far as the growth goes um, do you see it as positive, negative? Do you like the direction the city's going now? Well, uh, it's hard to say, Josh, right now. I mean, because when you pass by a few places, I know in this economic times, you know, it's been tough. So, you know, you look at the town center, I guess that's the town center over there, over the highway over there, uh, across from the uh, school board. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I was expecting that to take a different direction than what it actually did. But, yeah. And I see that a lot of businesses have uh, either closed their doors over there or, or, or something else. Right. Uh, I don't have anything else. All right. Then we'll go to our Mayor Pro Tem, Chad Wondell. I, again, thank you for, for your time and, and for your interest in all this. Um, it's always a great thing when our citizens want to get involved because that's what makes us a better city. So once again, thank you. Um, so... When it comes to PNZ and the EDC, do you have any background in either of those kind of divisions? Have you ever worked with real estate or um, been involved in, in anything like that? Well, I've been in uh, real estate in the sense of being on a board to solicit a, a commercial building before. Uh, and I've been in uh, um, like project management type of stuff, which is more like along economic development because I'm a business owner. You know, I'm a business owner here in Kennedy. So. Actually, that, that answer gave me a lot of information. Yes. Perfect. Do you have a preference over one board or the other? Well, not really. I mean, I, I'd like to see Kennedy become um, what it should be and what I think it should be. And that is uh, both boards were allowed to be that, you know, zoning is very important because, you know, you have to make sure you have the right zoning and, and who to accept in and who not to accept in and how do you zone uh, one business so one business area over a residential area mm -hmm. or not having residential areas too close to business areas. Excellent. That's all I got. All right, then Linda Rhodes. Yes, thank you, Mr. Terry. I appreciate your application and your interest to serve your city. Um, my my comment, I guess, is it's more of a comment instead of a question okay. uh, that we're bringing, you know, to the attention to the, each applicant is um, the board. Some of them will have alternate positions as well as the regular positions. Right. So if an applicant is, um, if they're assigned to an alternate position, we just want to stress that those are as equally as important as a regular position. Um, because you never know when one of the regular members are not gonna be able to attend. Therefore, the alternate has to be ready to you know, step in and um, act then and okay. be a voting member at that point in time. Um, okay. Just, you know, the alternates, they attend the, the meetings the same as the regular members. And I believe, you know, one of the staff can correct me if I'm wrong on this uh, or the mayor, I believe they can even input on the conversation. It's just when it comes to the voting that they can't vote unless they're actually deemed a regular oh, member okay. for that meeting. So, okay. but again, thank okay. you. Appreciate your application and, and we'll get back with you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So do, do you have any questions for us? Uh, I was looking at, I was trying to look over some of the stuff that was going on and I see where um, let me get a note here. I had uh, it was a piece of property that you guys had rezoned uh, over there at 6820, um, and it was saying it was at, since it, since the city was annexed. So I looked at that address, and that address is part of Fort Worth. So is that part of Kennedale actually? Melissa, would you, would you uh, help me out with that that piece of I property? You, I think you're talking about 6820 Oak Crest. That's in yes. the Oak Crest area yeah, Oak Crest. and has a Fort yeah. Worth address because it was annexed, but it is in the city of Canada. Oh, okay. Okay. It's just that it uses a Fort Worth at, uh, city address. Yeah. It's a little okay. confusing, but yeah. 
So is all that over there part of Kennedale as well? It is. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, just a, just a backdrop on that. That used to be part of actually Forest Hill ETJ. And then back in 1998, 97, uh, we traded for it. We gave them an old fire truck and they gave us all that property. And then we okay. annexed it. <laughs> okay, so what is the plan for that? Is, 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 other than just rezoning that, ad, that particular address, is that a particular reason why that particular address was, was rezoned or is the whole area being rezoned? Well, one of the things, and I'll let Melissa follow up on it, is that, that area used to be full of sexually oriented businesses. We had like seven of them. Oh, okay. Uh, and even though it technically wasn't in Canada, it reflected on Canada. That's, that's why the city council way back in the day annexed it so we could try to get rid of those businesses. And okay. so now you've seen a redevelopment with the Popeyes and the McDonald's. And uh, there's a motel, uh, I think two motels we're working on up there in that area as a is a, a great source of generating new revenue and new businesses. Okay. Uh, Melissa, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I mean, the, I think people often ask, what is the plan? And the city can make plans, but at the end of the day, it's a combination of what the market wants to do, what developers want to do, um, and, and what you might want. And there's a balance in between. So. You know, the city takes initiatives, for example, the EDC, well, the initiatives that Brian was referencing, but also the EDC owns a piece of property next to Popeye's. So the Economic Development Corporation is looking at uh, putting out a request for express, expression of interest on that property to get a good um, development that's consistent with that, uh, the goals for that area. That's a, a, a project that the city can take on or the EDC can take on directly. But outside of that, uh, in a lot of ways, it comes down to um, the making good decisions one at a time. And then over a period of time, one decision after another, after another, after another, uh, begins to change that community. So that's, it's a combination of the city taking action, but also uh, you know, what the market wants to do. Okay. Yeah, I would also su suggest too that because uh, you brought this question, uh, it was a zoning question where you said you want to separate businesses from residential. A lot of that's the old style of Euclidean zoning. Uh, and we've been moving more toward a form based zoning in neighborhood villages. And so if you take a look at the, the planning in that uh, mm -hmm. on, on our documents, it, it's, a, it's a different way of looking at zoning. So if you're on the PNZ or the EDC, it'll be something that you will, you will deal with. Okay. okay. It's interesting stuff, but trust me. Okay. Any other questions for us? Okay. Um, I, I was at a, a meeting a couple of years ago and they were talking about uh, growth in the city of Kennedale. And uh, they didn't, uh, they weren't able to discuss the types of businesses. But right now my question still is what businesses are being targeted to include in this growth? I mean, are there like any high tech businesses being included in this thought pattern or retail, uh, only retail restaurant or, or what? What type of businesses are being targeted for yeah. Canada growth? Uh, I'll, I'll try to tackle that and then most follow up. Part of it is, depends on what you're talking about in the city. The city zones different types of businesses. Right. Some of them we, we look to bring in uh, high tech. Uh, I think Josh could mention the ambulance company that helps build ambulances. You want people that have good paying jobs uh, and usually toward the uh, southeast end, we've looked at bringing some light industrial clean businesses that way. Whereas in other areas, we look at retail. It's not going to be just one. It's going to be a mix of businesses. Right. And I think that's how you have to be successful. Melissa? Um, well, and I would just say that it's not just about targeting. We want this business or that business. Um, a lot of what we're trying to do is set the table for business. So it's like sitting down to eat without setting the table first. And we have a lot of work that we need to do. Um, the parkway was mentioned earlier. The, um, <clears throat> one of the things that we're working on is a redesign of the parkway to create a complete street so that it has a sense of um, what we planners call there, there. It's sense of you have arrived somewhere. Um, and so, you know, that sort of setting the table for development is very important, uh, you know, along with targeting a specific kind of business. You've got to have a community that businesses want to come to. 
Right. So we're in the process of working on a multi-pronged approach on those improvements, as well as, um, you know, the council is going to be looking at this, but infrastructure improvements that are so incredibly important. I think I've spent the last two months talking about sewer. Uh, <laughs> not real exciting, but uh, you can't get development without sewer infrastructure. So right. it's, it's fun to talk about. We want this kind of business or that. But at the end of the day, if you don't set the table for that, you're never going to get it anyway. So right. uh, those are the kinds of conversations that, that we're uh, having and working on actively. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Melissa mentioned sewer. Okay. Are, is the sewer water being tested for like COVID? I know that's what was happening in New Zealand. And they're doing it on the Northeast, in the Northeast, in Rhode Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts. They're doing like um, testing the sewer system. Well, with our sewer lines, our sewage goes to Arlington. Most of it goes to Arlington. Uh -huh. um, we don't have a sewage plant. So okay. as far as I know, George, we are not testing our sewage for COVID. Uh, I, I, not that I'm aware of now, but it does. We have wastewater that goes both to Fort Worth and to through the city of Arlington system to the Trinity River Authority. And either one of those could be doing testing because that's where our, mm -hmm. where our waste is being uh, transported to. Okay. Any other questions? Well, I was waiting to see if there are any other questions for me. <laughs> Well, you know, I think what we expect uh, if you're on a board is to give us your best judgment, right? Right. Uh, and, and if you're the loan descending voice, stick to your loan descending voice, right? Okay. Uh, okay. You know, I think one of the famous Supreme Court justices was known as the great dissenter. Uh, right. If you feel you're in the right, stick with it. Don't go along with the crowd. Uh, but realize that after one vote, then you're on to the next thing and that one's done. Okay. But we want your judgment. That's what okay. we want. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, thank you for applying. And we're going to make the our appointments here in about two weeks. Okay, then. All right. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Thank you for, thank you for applying. We really appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. All right. So next up, we've got uh, James Mark Green applying for the KKB. How you doing, sir? Doing fine. How are you doing? Very well. You know, there's a Twitter uh, page that calls Room Raider and it rates people's room and their background in Zoom. I'm going to say you have a really good room going on. Where's well, uh, my wife's uh, workstation? Okay, well, then your wife has a really good room going on. <laughs> well, thank so, you. I'll tell her. We're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to go sort of a round robin with the council, uh, asking you questions, and then we'll give you a time to answer, uh, ask us questions. And then we're going to make the official appointments at our next council meeting, which is in about two weeks. Okay. Um, we just want to interview people that we don't know and get a feel for you and you get a feel for us. Uh, and so we're going to start off this time with our Mayor Pro Tem, Chad Wandel. Um, good evening. Again, thank you for expressing your interest in, in, in being a part of the city and the organization and, and the volunteers that, that make it such a great city. Um, that's, that's why we're such a great city is because we have such great people in our community that, that do give so much of their time. Um, now, I see you're interested in the KKB, and, and uh, I know I get emails from the KKB just to remind everybody um, that the KKB is a get dirty club. So um, they have dirty meetings, meaning they go play in the dirt. Uh, they, they do stuff. Um, and a lot of people don't realize how active that board really is out in the community. And I just wanted to make sure you're aware of that and, and you understand that they, they literally go out and they help pick out trees and plant trees and redo gardening and shrubberies and um, you know they help organize our pickup trash days and, and they're down in the ditches with us all just making sure because some people go into that thinking it's it's just a you know a, a fan club for the city and that's not what it is so I just managing expectations <laughs> well I, I like all that stuff and I was interested in multiple areas of Kennedale on the boards but since I live in the county I was uh, not allowed to join, but I want to be an active part of this town and watch it grow. Excellent, um, and and that's really uh, what we're looking for is people that just love the love the city and want to watch it grow. And, and 
and that's a beautiful thing. So that's really all I have on on the, the KKB stuff. So all right. Well, then I'll go to Linda Rhodes. Hello. Thank you so much for your your application. We really appreciate it. Um, even though you're not in our city, you need to move here. So, <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, I, I like, I'm like Chad, um, I've received emails too from the current KKB members and um, that's a big concern. They wanna make sure that their membership is, uh, are real workers, you know, because that's what you're gonna be doing is just out there in all kinds of weather sometimes and, you know, getting your hands dirty. So um, if you're willing, then, you know, we'll proceed with the application process and Wish you well. Thank you again for applying. Well, thank you. All right. That brings me over to Josh. My dogs are fixing to go crazy. My wife just got home, so forgive me. <laughs> uh, I just, same thing as them. I appreciate you uh, you uh, applying. We really appreciate it. I really don't have any questions. Though, so. All right. Well, then I'll leave it. Uh, do you have any questions for us? Well, you know, uh, I, I wish my current house was in Kennedell because when I originally moved here, I thought I was in the city, but found out I was Tarrant County. But, uh, you know, I'm very interested in, you know, doing what I can because I really want to see this area grow. And out here uh, by the uh, my house, it is growing. So. Well, that's great. Well, we have certainly appreciate you applying. We'll make our decision here. Uh, and you'll probably be getting your hands dirty, as Chad said, with, within, a, with a, within a month. Uh, okay. All right? Yes, well, sir. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye. All right. Uh, next up, Joanne Huckabee. I have not seen her on yet. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll try to come back then. Uh, we do have uh, Julie Jacobson, who's at uh, 620. She's already on and she's willing to start now if you want okay, to. Okay, well, let's, let's take Julie Jacobson. Hey, thank you so much. How are you all tonight? We are doing great. Um, I hope you're doing fine. What uh, we're going to do here today is uh, we're going to do sort of a round robin of questions from your council. Uh, and then you'll ask any questions you have of us. And then what we're doing tonight is we're just interviewing and then we will make uh, the official appointments here in about two weeks at the next council meeting. So uh, I think I'm gonna start off with Linda this time. Okay, hi. Thank hi. you very much for applying. Appreciate your time. Um, I see that you have actually applied for all boards. Are you, yes. you're interested in serving in any capacity, I guess, that we may need for our city? Yes, ma'am. That okay. is correct. Do you have a preference? Because there's so many boards here. Uh, do you have um, like your top two, let's say, that you're more interested in? My top two would most likely be um, the economic development and planning and zoning. Okay. Do you have any background in those two areas? Um, this would be my first time actually um, being able to participate through the city council necessarily. Um, it has been something that I've been interested in doing for quite some time, um, particularly ever since the comprehensive plan came out in 2012. Um, I've reviewed it periodically. I, you know, we have a copy of it here. Um, and so I, I'm excited about being involved in, in advancing this. Okay, um, just one other comment, um, and we've been mentioning this to, to the applicants in which um, the board that they're applying actually has an alternate position, um, which planning and zoning and EDC, I believe both of them do. Um, the planning and zoning has two alternate positions. Um, those positions are equally as important as the regular positions. Of course. Uh, so I just, I wanted to mention that and like if the board, I mean, if the council were to appoint you to an alternate position that is very important still, those alternates are, are still expected to attend the meetings so that they will be abreast of all of the goings on in that, um, 
that particular board. Also, if one of the regular members is not there at that meeting, then the chairperson would move up one of the alternates to a voting position. You'd still, the uh, alternates would still have an opportunity for comments though. So um, just wanted you to be aware of that, that um, mm -hmm. all positions are, are so important. Appreciate you applying. That means a lot. That's the first step. And just thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I understand what you're saying and, and I would be amenable to it. Thank you. All right, um, Chad. Um, trying to think of a better question than I had before. <laughs> um, so I know you said you, you reviewed our comprehensive plan. Um, do you think that our comprehensive plan um, going forward at this point is still valid for our city? Or do, do you think, since you've done some review on it, do you think we're kind of at a point where maybe some updates are needed? Well, obviously, as a, it's a 2012 plan, I think um, we're always ready for some updating of what the plan could be. Um, and I, I think, as I said, getting more of our citizens involved in the planning, I think would help the outcome so that we would have the best outcome for the community as a whole. Real quick, uh, Melissa, when was the last update to the plan? It's a 2012 plan. All right, did we do an update on that or the master plan in 2016, 2017? Well, in 2016, we, uh, the city adopted the, the new zoning code, but the comprehensive plan hasn't been updated. Are we, I, I'm, I'm, I know you say, well, use the Mary should know. I think we actually did something exactly like that about three or four years ago that we took in citizens input and we actually did an update either of the master plan or the comprehensive plan. I mean, we didn't do a complete rehash, but we know that we have to do a re, uh, we have to do a review of a comp plan every, at least every five years. And I don't think we've waited eight years. It'd be something I'd double check. Okay. Maybe before you got here, but we did do it. <laughs> that I'm sure of. We actually did something when she got here. Remember when she- Yeah, we did the citizen yeah. survey thing and had yeah. some public meetings. Uh, yeah. We did, but, but that's not an update of the plan. Yeah, I don't think we did any official updating. It was just more of a, where do you stand? What's your vision for Kennedale? Kind of helping reshape our mission statement. Now, so I'm just saying it's not accurate to say 2012, we haven't done anything, Melissa. I think we have, is what I'm trying to say. That we have, I mean, we haven't sat on our heels since 2012. Because uh, that's that's now eight, almost nine years that we have not done anything. And that's not appropriate. For a comp plan. No, I'm not yeah. suggesting we haven't done anything. In fact, uh, a great deal of the plan is yet to be implemented. So oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're still actively in implementing it. Yeah, and we've looked for citizen input. I think what we did, like Chad, Chad said. Yeah, I do. I do think to bring up Julie's point is that it's not been a sort of a static thing, and uh, and I think Julie's absolutely right about getting more people involved. That's very much true. Uh, so I think we're now with Josh, right? Hey, Linda. I'm, I'm Linda. You live on Linda Lane. <laughs> Julie, you and I had spoke uh, a couple weeks ago. I sat down and <clears throat> anybody that requests to be on all, any board, I call them and talk to them. So you and I, I think if you don't remember, we went through text and discussed and I have you down as the EDC and the PNZ. Yes. I think that's also what you told Linda. So um, I really don't have any other questions. Um, What's your thoughts on Linda Lane? So that's kind of what was in my head for some reason, because I know you live out there on Linda Lane, but are you all for the bridge coming across there? I mean, you think that that needs improvement? Okay, so I want to make sure I understand you correctly. When is, is Are you referring to um, connecting Linda Road to New Hope? Yeah, so like, are you all for that as far as that's some of the decisions you would have to make? You know, and I would definitely need some more information about it. Unfortunately, um, when I've seen the people out here surveying, I've, I've asked them questions about it, but I haven't really gotten any. Okay. Yeah, I, I was just curious. I don't have any questions for you. Like I said, since we spoke before, I've already got you written down for EDZ and PNZ. So Understood. Thank, you. Uh, thank you for applying with us though. I really appreciate it. All right, Julie, any questions for us? 
Um, well, I don't have any questions. But, well, unless somebody can find out how to fix my video, I apologize for not being able to get it to work. I tried restarting, and unfortunately, that didn't work today. But um, next time, I'll definitely make sure I have it working. Thank you all so much for having me, and I'm excited about this opportunity. All right. Well, thank you, Julie, for applying. Yes, sir. All, all right. right. Thank Rosie, you. Rosie, who's next? We have Joanne Huckabee. Oh, Joanne Huckabee. Then uh, welcome, Joanne Huckabee. Thank you. Well, Joanne, let me tell you how we're going to work this. Uh, we are going to, um, we won't make appointments until the next council meeting, which is in two weeks. Um, okay. normally, normally we would have done this in October, but COVID and elections, you know. Uh, but I'm, we'll do a round robin of asking, uh, asking every councilman to ask you some questions. And then you'll get a chance to ask us questions. Okay. So it goes both ways. So uh, I don't know where I'm starting at. I, I, I'm going to start with uh, Chad. I'm going to start with Chad. I can't keep track anymore. I think it was Josh's turn, but whatever. Anyway. We'll, just, we'll just ignore him. <laughs> um, so I see that you're interested in the KKB, the Parks Board, and the TERS Board. Um, out of those three, what's your top one? Um, I would say the keeping Kennedale beautiful, mainly because I love Kennedale. I'm, I went to Kennedale High School. I actually started at Kennedale ISD in the fifth grade moved away and then fought my way back <laughs> so i really do love kennedale i consider it my hometown um and just want to do what's best for it excellent now i will say um with that being your top pick i'm going to give you the the mandatory disclaimer that we get from the uh, kkb guys is just to let you know it, it, it's a dirty board uh they do dirty things uh this sounds inappropriate but they play in the dirt um they they dig up trees they they organize the trash cleanup days just kind of setting expectations for people to go into that because we've had some people in the past join that board and freak out when there was work involved <laughs> um so, now nah. i will bring helpers with me <laughs> oh they're gonna love you <laughs> excellent that that's really all i have all right then let's go over to uh linda Hi, thank you so much for your application. Appreciate your time. Uh, what would be your second choice? Um, honestly, I either one of them. It's not it's not an either or. It's they're kind of both. Um, they're, you know, yeah. When I was applying, it was the either the one or the other. I wasn't even even thinking about keeping Kennedale beautiful until I talked to Josh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And then he said, I'm going to nominate you for this board. And I started looking at it, started thinking about it. And that's when that one jumped up to my favorite. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. OK, well, thank you. You're welcome. That's well, then that brings us to Josh, who was supposed to be first, but now he ended up last somehow. I'm not sure how that happened. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> it's all good. I've already got her down for where I think she needs to go. I appreciate her taking the time to talk to us and, and showing interest in volunteering. So uh, I don't have any other questions. So. All right. Then, Joanne, do you have any questions for us? Um, actually, like with COVID going on, how is the meetings working? Are they Zoom meetings or are they in person? Things like that. Uh, well, we're still Zooming because, as you know, right now Tarrant County is still spiking like crazy with COVID. And we right. now know that the more virulent form. And so far, we've been lucky that we've been able to do everything we need to do uh, through Zoom. Um, okay. It's, it's, not as, it's not as great as seeing somebody in person. But uh, right. we, we're, we're trying to be safe for only ourselves, not only right. ourselves, but the public and the staff. Right. Okay. Um, that's basically the only thing I was wondering was like how we're handling meetings at the moment. Um, I don't live far from City Hall, so it's not like I, it's not a problem to get there. I was just curious how they were being handled now. Well, we're hoping with the vaccinations coming out, we'll, we'll get back to uh, normal. But, okay. I mean, Chad will never get back to normal, but normal for Chad. <laughs> uh, so. I see him shaking his head. <laughs> well, thank you for applying. And like I said, we'll make our uh, appointments in two weeks. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Rosie, who's next? 
We have Andrew Malkowski. I don't yes, know if I pronounced that correctly. Yes, ma'am. Oh, right. Malkowski. Yeah. All right, Andrew. Hi, I'm Brian. Um, how we're going to work this is that uh, we won't do appointments until two weeks from now at the next council meeting. Uh, this is interviews. And we're going to do sort of a round robin uh, with all the council members. Uh, and then at the end, you'll get a chance to ask us questions. All right. Uh, Sounds good. In both ways. And we're going to start off, uh, since I skipped in the last time, with Josh. Hey, Andrew. Thanks for uh, taking the time to speak with us and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that you did. My memory has has faded away. Did I contact you? You did. Okay. Uh, so I had reached out to the city council uh, in regards to getting some signage, community signage for our neighborhood um, yeah, to get right. a no outlet sign kind of coming in. That's right. So, yeah. Um, and I have you, you showed interest. You said out of all of them, you wanted to possibly go with the PNZ. Yes, right? sir. Yeah. Um, do you know much about the PNZ and kind of? Uh, so, uh, when I was getting my bachelor's degree uh, and kind of starting to work on my master's degree for, at UTA, uh, I was working for the uh, North Central Texas Council of Governments. Uh, I was a transportation planner. And uh, so we did a lot of work with the local cities and local communities uh, before I did, <clears throat> sorry. So before I worked on my, I decided to go the uh, MPA route. I was actually trying to do a uh, master of planning. Um, but then I decided that uh, the MPA was kind of more where I was wanting to go with that. Um, and so, but I, I am aware of kind of the, the understanding of, of how the zones work and kind of going towards building towards that goal and, and having that vision for the future and understanding the reasoning why we need different zoning and planning uh, to achieve those goals. Cool. Uh, as far as our city is the way it is now, I mean, do you do you like the the direction it's going? Do you think some things might need to change? Or? Uh, so that's kind of another reason why I kind of want to get into one of these uh, citizen boards. I uh, really, um, so since we moved here, we moved here a little over a year ago now, moved here in 2019, 2018. And, um, so I've been trying to get involved in, with the city. And um, here recently though, we've had some issues with, uh, had some, some family issues. So I had, I lost my father um, two years ago and then the following subsequent year, my wife lost her father. Uh, so it's just kind of been um, dealing with probating estates and things like that. And so I haven't been able to get as involved uh, with the city as I would like to be. Uh, but in doing that, uh, I actually am the, the president of our HOA here in the Galena Village Creek. Uh, once again, I appreciate you taking the time to, to want to be on one of these boards and speak with us. So, uh, that's all the questions I got. All right, uh, Linda. Thank you for your application. Appreciate that. And my question is, uh, what would be your second choice of boards if you could not get on the PNZ? I mean, uh, wherever y'all would see me fit. I mean, uh, I have a... Uh, undergraduate in economics. I have a master's degree in public administration. Um, I've worked for the MPO. And then uh, from there, I have uh, where I'm working at now, I uh, work for the, um, the uh, Department of Labor and the Employee Benefits Security Administration. And uh, with them, I'm an investigator for benefits. Very good. And I see on your application, it says former voting member on Arlington ISD Citizens Bond Oversight Committee as well. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so prior to us moving to city of Kennedale, uh, I was beginning to get more involved with the city of Arlington after I had finished uh, my master's degree. And one of the, the roles that I had, I was appointed to oversee uh, the bond oversight committee. Uh, there was a large bond um, that was voted on and it went towards improving the schools and transportation technology, uh, security for the schools, developing vegetables, uh, the um, you know, single point entry for all of the schools and things like that. Okay, very good. Thank you again for your application. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Hi, Chad Wendell. It's nice to hear somebody else going to UTA and going through the School of Urban Public Affairs. My first degree came from there. Okay, so, very cool. Uh, yep, I was a city planner for a long, long time. Uh, so everybody has this aha moment when that kind of gets them into government, um, and it's it's rarely a good aha moment uh what was your aha moment like what what got you like focused in 
so I began my career in the military. I served uh, six years on active duty, and then I did three years in the Guard uh, while I was uh, going to school for my undergraduate. And basically, um, I've just always not, I've never been very inclined to, to private business, private industry, um, especially kind of working where I'm at now. Um, I can kind of see how uh, when funds get tight, employees are the first people to get uh, the short end of the stick. And um, so I've just always, um, I've believed in government. Uh, I understand the importance of government and um, going, doing an undergraduate in economics. I mean, it really makes you understand just the value uh, of, of, of government, of what all government really does do to you or d does provide. And uh, it's unfortunate that um, a lot of the citizens don't really truly understand um, the value and power of government. Um, you know, as soon as when I was a transportation planner, you know, as soon as gas prices would spike, uh, you know, the very first thing that everyone calls for is to, oh, we'll get rid of the gas tax. And then at the same time, they're complaining that we have toll roads, but it's like, well, we haven't raised the gas tax in 40 years. Um, cars have gotten much better and more fuel efficient. And uh, so we have to find ways to fund roads, right? People still want to be able to get from point A to point B. And as the government, we wanted, to, you know, goods and people to be able to travel from point A to point B. Um, so it's just, um, it's more so that I, I just, I believe in the mission of government, um, that, you know, coming at, from an economic standpoint, um, we can't have a bunch of private militaries running around, right? We need to have a common pot of money that provides for the common defense. Um, and so it's just always been something within me that I've, I've just, I enjoy government and what it does. Excellent. That's it's usually that trigger moment for everybody that that gets them laser focused on why they want to be involved is a, a good eye opener on on their whole ideology of of government. So that was thank you for the the information. Well, I just want to say I just found my soulmate in transportation, uh, saying all the things that uh, I've been advocating for for fifteen years. I, I serve on Tarrant Regional Transportation Coalition. You probably know Michael Morris, I'm sure. Yes, yeah, I worked uh, with him for, for quite a few years. Yeah, the transportation guru of gurus. Right. I know Victor Vandergriff, all those people, and you say the same things I do. Uh, my question uh, real quickly is that you drive Kennedale Parkway, um, I'm sure. Yes, sir. As a person who's worked in roads, what would you do to fix Kennedale Parkway? Uh, well, the, the road itself is actually fairly nice. Right. Um, so, um, but if you're talking more about the businesses that occupy the space, uh, I can see that as being a hindrance to kind of the overall vision as to where the city, where it seems that the city is trying to go. Well, I, I guess I'm going to more that Michael Morris is by, trying to help us do a complete streets project along there, along with the cog. And we've got a lot of roads that angle in at strange angles. Right. Um, and then, of course, you know, uh, they're right, about ready to rebuild 287, mm -hmm. I-20 and 820 interchange, which could really benefit Canada with a better egress and access up there at the top near the McDonald's and the Nancy's Liquors. And the right. So, yeah, I'm, uh, you're, you're singing my song right now. <laughs> Sounds good. So do you have any questions for us? Um, no, I mean, you've kind of already answered kind of what I had questions on is... Um... About the, uh, you're going to take some time. About two weeks from now, we'll we'll find out um, kind of assignments or boards or whatnot. Right. Um, but uh, I mean, like I said, I'm I'm open to, I'm re I'm really just trying to get my foot into kind of being more active and more involved about what's going on within the city. Um, so I mean, any board is is I would be happy to sit on. All right. Well, thank you very much for applying, um, and uh, we'll let you know here in about two weeks. All right. Sounds good, sir. Thank you. Uh, who's next? We do not have anyone waiting at this time. We have a little gap in between. If someone comes on, I'll let you know. All right. So uh, if you want to take a real quick break right here, um, it's 618. If you want to uh, break till 625, uh, go ahead and turn your camera off and go do what you need to do. Uh, Josh, take care of your dogs. Um, well, I want to discuss something here in a little bit. I guess when we get back, we got time. So, or we can do it right now, real quick. Well, we can't do it now because I've got Chad already leaving. Okay. Then I will wait because there's only three of us. Oh, Chad's back. And that was a great, hey, great question. <laughs> great question, by the way, on the Kennedy Parkway. That was, uh, 
I liked him. He yeah, he's a sharp guy. He's smart. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll be back. Okay. Hey, Rosie, how many more are on the list, do you know? Uh, yes, we just have three left. Corey Hines for Parks, and then uh, Alex Daniels is EDC and PZ, and then the last one, Kimberly's KKB. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to step away for a moment.
I'm not sure if Rosie's video is sort of an abstract art. No, it was her chair. Okay, got it. I didn't know if you were wearing a hat and we were just seeing the top of your head in the picture. I wasn't sure. It's a painting of the meaning of everything. Mm -hmm. that's, that's right. I was going, wow, okay. I have a blank canvas right now. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like my brain. <laughs> my head hurts like it should be blank. Ugh. <laughs> so much Our lag, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh. have, have we anybody else jump in? Not yet. We have three left. We were going to fly up here, but then they canceled a lot of the flights that were coming in. Um, I guess they were suspect, expecting inclement weather, and it didn't ever actually happen. Yeah. Then I was like, well, I'll just fly in. It's on the corner there. Yeah, there's a burglar in your house, apparently. Not I'm yet. looking behind you. And Not yet. Nasty vigilante. That's, that's my mother-in-law. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's looking at, we're, we're in D.C. right now, so. Oh, wow. No, which it's funny because he texted me last. We're at D.C., Chad. Um, we're at the Hyatt Regency, so we're literally across the street from Capitol Hill. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah be careful tomorrow, would you? Yep. I got, I got business to attend to, and put, and they're going to, it was basically all this stuff's going down here. And I was like, well, it'd be interesting. And, and I have business on Capitol Hill, so it'll be fun. I've got three guys from work that just went up there yesterday to Washington, and my neighbor went. I know more yep. people going to Washington than I do to have COVID. Wow. Uh, yep. <laughs> who are the three left names? Because obviously the list I got, it's not matching up. I yeah, saw who's our last three names, Rosie. The last three are Corey Hines, yeah. Alex Daniels, and Kimberly Courtney. And no one's on yet. And what time are they scheduled? Well, uh, Corey was six forty, so we have a few minutes. Okay. We had a blank stop, uh, blank between Julie and Corey. And then we have a 650 and a seven. Yes, sir. Uh, you want me to see if they could come earlier or no, or just leave yeah. it the way it is? Absolutely. Sounds good. Okay. What was the Heinz name? First Corey? name? I believe it's Corey Heinz. I got it. I've already got them. Is Linda back? Yep. So I just wanted to go over something real quick. You know, obviously this P and Z is quite a hot topic. Uh, it's a sought after position to be in. We've got six open positions, but, and I was contacted the other day by a gentleman named Michael Hugan, who used to work for the police department here. He now, I think he still works, volunteers there, works part time, not sure. But the main thing is he works for the school district. And I just want to know, I want an honest answer is it good business to be able to have somebody with the amount of development that we have going to be on the PNZ? who will be able to give an insight on kind of what we've got going on here in the city. I, my first blush on that is no, uh, because the school district has essentially opposed any development we had. He's an employee of the school district. Uh, that puts him in a tough position in terms of when he has to go vote. Um, I think that's, a, that's, you know, I think that can almost be a conflict I mean, there's a, there's a difference between, I think, wanting to make sure that we're in close contact with the school and getting their input, as opposed to maybe giving them a vote on the PNZ, especially when, I would also argue, you've got a lot of really good candidates right now, but that's just my thought. Well, I know, and I understand, but, you know, first question is, what is another alternate way for us for the school to keep us informed, for us to keep the school informed, because we've talked about before setting up meetings and stuff, but that hasn't happened. And for instance, mm -hmm. the school is there in Arlington, that development that's possibly going in behind Kroger is just going to, Patterson's, they're, I mean, they're in trouble. You well, know? I, 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 would under, I wouldn't underestimate that the fact that, that George and Chad G talk often, um, 
I, I certainly talk with the president of the school board every day um, a, a, in a way. And he tells me what's going on. I tell him, but I know that J Chad and George do communicate, especially when there's going to be issues that pop up. That's how we've been able to cooperate on whether it was hotspots or uh, trying to fix the traffic flow. There are, there are ways that we do cooperate as much as we can. We have also provided information to staff there on various developments. Now, I know in when I was with the city of Grand Prairie, we had a school person advisor on the PNZ. They got to be in conversational portions of, you know, the behind the scenes meetings, the work session and stuff. Um, and they got to provide input, but then they didn't get to, they didn't sit on the panel to, to take a vote or anything, but they were there in an advisory capacity, almost like when you do the, the development review committee kind of round table thing with your fire department, your police department, your engineers and all that stuff. Um, they kind of just served as an advisory role uh, to just say, this is, this is our expected impact to the school district. Um, you know, yada, yeah, yada. I, I mean, it sounds like a great idea because, you know, I'm hearing a different story. I'm hearing there's a complete disconnect and, you know, I just think that it'd be a great idea for, I mean, if anything, just like what you just said, Chad, is to have somebody just in an advisory role to, to be able to report back or, or anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can see the advantage of having somebody there physically when something comes in to go, listen, there's nothing wrong with this, except this is how it's going to impact the school district. This is what we would probably have to be looking at. Like in the case of Patterson, I mean, they're, they're probably at the point where we're really starting to have to go, when do we build a new elementary school? Absolutely. Isn't so it? it would be nice to know X amount of students is what we have left for capacity, expected capacity from something else is gonna put us here. Granted, it's not one of the considerations that we really do because it's the school board's job to, to go, hey, we're at capacity, we should probably start thinking about building the school. But it would be nice from our side to go, like if it's an apartment complex, is this too dense for this zone because it puts too many people in one place too fast that we can't even catch up at that point. Right, but it also gives them an opportunity to plan because, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, because really the, the PNZ is the, the, the stopwatch that goes, if this goes through, you've got basically a year and a half to two years before Absolutely. you have people in a place. Yeah, and I think the other thing is there's not a complete disconnect. I mean, I don't see how that's in any way possible when I'm on the phone with the school board president on a daily basis. It's a daily basis. Uh, I spent part of Christmas at the school board president's house. Uh, and I know George and Chad talk, but it doesn't mean that necessarily we're on the same page because the school district has its own priorities. And sometimes those align with the city and other times they have to do what's best for the school district, no matter what it does to the city. Uh, right. And and, and John, I've talked about, I've talked with John about that. And he goes, well, we have to do this, Brian, because it's best for the school district. Sorry, guys. And, a, you know, we're the same way. I mean, there's things we oh, have. Yeah, absolutely. To do, you know? Yeah, I mean, think about this. You know, I know that, for example, uh, the school district's upset right now about those apartments you mentioned, right? Uh, Arlington, Arlington's going to do what they want to do because they're going to see that in their best interest, right? Right. Yeah. And um, Imagine if up at Oakcrest, somebody wanted to build a lot of apartments that were going to feed only into the Fort Worth school system. Would, would we say, well, that's great because it brings in revenue for us, but it doesn't affect our school system? No, but would we reach out to them and ask them what their thoughts are on it? You know? Yeah, and we do that with the school district. Yeah, you know, we did. I mean, but I do like Chad's idea. Um, you know, you could say, hey, we've and I know they're up to date, but please send somebody here to give you your input. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Just FYI, we have a staff member that's working currently on a listing, doing a comprehensive and detailed list and information on all of the projects going on and proposed on our website. So that there's one place that you can go to and see everything that's happening. And it's interesting too, that the school board enrollment has been flat. Uh, even with all the new development, their enrollment has been flat. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you talk to the school board, they're as perplexed by that too. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it has a, a give it bonus points to the school district. That means our graduation rates are 
outpacing our new student rates. And uh, in the, part of it's our demographic of our city. We actually have a, a fairly significantly larger portion of older people in our city than most cities do. So that's part of it. We, uh, and, and, and I say that that's a good thing for, for the vision of Kennedale is people love this place, they don't leave. So we don't have turnover where, you know, people come in and swarm, stay for three or five years and they bolt. Um, people come here, fall in love and stay here. I see it to where the citizens that live here financially do quite well. And I see a lot of kids going to private schools. I, I, that's where I've seen a difference. I think that's true too, Josh. I think there's been a lot of people going to private yeah. schools that have led that to be and and charter school school more popular, right? Uh, and that's led to that flat enrollment too, because you would think once you added Brookstone and these other places, you would see a spike in enrollment and they haven't seen it. Yeah. But I think you're right. I think some of it is uh, like Chad said, we have an older population that moves in, uh, not as many kids. And then the private schools are, are a draw too. I think the school district would say that's probably true. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate y'all. I was just curious, you know. Uh, but I do think it would be great to have somebody there, you know, if they know in advance and say, here's our opinion. Uh, this yeah, is especially what on big ticket items. I mean, if the school has an opinion, send somebody. If they don't have an opinion, we're going to take no attendance as no opinion. Um, it, that happened to us too recently mm -hmm. on an item. And I even mentioned it during a meeting, you know, we need the school district there, someone there. And I made eye contact with someone that was in the audience that knew what I was talking about and we heard crickets. So that would be the ideal thing is for someone to just be their representative and to actually have public comment to the whole council, not just one or two of us, but to everybody so that we all know and we're all on the same page. Yeah. That was really a little frustrating because, you know, I was wanting that. I was wanting their input. And that was a very crucial time. And I, I felt like the, the whole council did not receive that together, you know. My opinion. I wouldn't mind it oh, even if it was just somebody coming up and giving uh, three minutes worth of opinion from the school board or the, somebody from the school as an official, you know, not the, these aren't the statements of the school board or the, the school district. I know it's like, these are the statements of the school board, school district. Just, you know, here's here's our concerns with this, this. I mean, because yeah. sometimes it may not even be the people coming in. It could just be the location isn't uh, brilliant for getting in and out. Or, you know, if we have to get buses into this property, it's going to be difficult, right? Because right? we have one way in, one way out. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have to make sure people know that this is going to be, uh, your children have to go to the end of the street on the corner to get picked up. Uh, just knowing that stuff in advance, we might be able to look at a developer and go, hey, maybe you should think about relaying this out a little bit to be a little more student friendly or I mean, you never know what you're going to come across until somebody puts that opinion out there. Yeah, there's nothing that we've done that the school board hasn't been aware of. Now, like Linda said, whether they send anybody up here to say something is, a, is another matter. Uh, but they are aware. Do we have our other person here yet? It's uh, 638. Not yet. Well, they are punctual. I will give them that much. I, um, we want to make sure we don't stray too far from the agenda here on that that topic, but uh, it's an interesting topic, uh, uh, especially, and we've always had this, uh, Josh, you're right, there's always been this relationship with the school board, and it's true in a lot of cities. It's just, since they're separate governmental entities, and people understand that, there's sometimes different goals on each of the entities that sometimes mm -hmm. conflict. Um, that's true. And by the way, the school board's now just gone over a lot of changes too, right? They've got a lot of new members. So now they've mm -hmm. got to get caught up. Um, and they may have new members again here in five months. Heck, no, well, we, we may have all new members here in five months. Joy. <laughs> I know, right? How many people are in that hotel room? I just saw another man go by your. <laughs> that was Papa. Okay. <laughs> How's the weather up there? Cold? Uh, it's actually, well, I, I would say it's about the same. The sun heats us up in Texas a little more. 
It was mid 40s today. It's getting down just a little bit below freezing tonight, and then tomorrow it'll be mid 40s again. So oh, pretty cool. Yeah. Ran through a little bit of freezing precipitation uh, right as we hit Virginia out of Tennessee, but um, it didn't last very long and it didn't stick around. So that, that's Did the best time. Did you take 40 across Tennessee? Man, that's a long drive. Yep. <laughs> we stopped in Knoxville last night and stayed the night in Knoxville and left Knoxville this morning. So. And then went up, what, 81? Yep. We had to drop somebody off in Alexandria and then we – zigzagged around and came across so there's no easy way to get to dc <laughs> the shenandoah valley right yep yep it's beautiful it's the best way to go truthfully it's like if if time wasn't an issue every time you see the sign that says this route rvs and, and trucks excluded that's the exit you take and trust me have your camera ready yeah. <laughs> it's, it's worth it yeah because you have time you could have popped over to jefferson's house you could have done this uh Skyline Parkway. There's just yep. so many things to see. We'll come back because uh, I take my check ride in uh, next weekend. So uh, I'll be flying a lot. <laughs> I plan on hopping all around through here and doing some coastal flying. Yeah, I got my pilot's license 30 years ago. Uh, then just sort of fell out of the habit, but it's a lot of fun. Yep. It's been a blast. I've loved it. Went down. It's, it's something else when you get to just fly to Austin for some barbecue. <laughs> right. so are you going to go for, you know, um, you know multi-prop eventually? And uh, I don't know if I'll go into multi-engine yet. Uh, I don't really have a need for it. Uh, unless somebody goes, hey, I have this multi-engine airplane. You want it? <laughs> then I'm going, like, yeah. What about uh, IFR? Uh, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm going straight into instrument ratings. So. Okay straight into it. that's the smart safe way to do it um plus like you know if i were to have tried to fly up, fly up here yesterday i wouldn't have been able to get off the ground the ceilings were too low so you know, people, stuck think, home. <laughs> people think small planes are dangerous but usually it's pilot error they, they try to challenge weather or they 99 percent of the time yeah because worst case scenario something goes wrong in the air the thing still glides you just that's right <laughs> yeah because they'll try to make a turn lose critical airspeed and spin Yep, they, they turn too sharp because they, they panic and think they got to get back to the runway instead of taking that nice, just gentle turn, you know, just yeah. keep it or gentle, it keep it safe. Yep. And the difference is, is you're in a jumbo jet, you can land that, that plane in a parking lot. You can't do that with a jumbo jet. Nope. <laughs> I, I can be down and stop before a 50 yard line. <laughs> yeah, people that all the time. Yep. I've actually done that a couple of times out at Spinks Airport where you know, you come in with a nice strong headwind and you land and you're like, well, I didn't quite make the first turnoff because uh, I landed in 10 feet. <laughs> Isn't that a perfect landing? It's just that you just almost float to a stop. <laughs> yep. It's like wheels touch down and you just kind of, and we're done. <laughs> so, Rosie, anybody? On chat. What's the shortest you can take off? The shortest I can take in the airplanes that I'm training on right now? Uh, I can... Yeah, I could probably get off the ground in 500 feet. Depends on headwind, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get a good headwind, you can get off the ground. I mean, it's not technically the safest way to do it because then you have to, you know, stay low to the ground till you build up some airspeed, but you can get off. I mean, they have some, you know, short takeoff and stole airplanes, short takeoff and landing airplanes that like the world record's like nine inches. <laughs> <laughs> You know, not to be spoilers, but the new Wonder Woman, he they bring back Steve Trevor, who flew a biplane in World War II, World War One, and then they put him in a jet and he's able to fly a jet. It doesn't yeah, work. No training, no training. Yeah, yeah. No, these no these buttons are. don't matter. <laughs> I'm letting Corey Hines in now. Oh, all right. Clean up. All right, straighten up. Everybody <laughs> behave themselves. Is is Corey in? Not yet. There he is. Corey. Oh, hi. I'm uh, Mary Johnson. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank you for applying. Um, what we're going to do here is uh, we won't do our appointments until two weeks from today at the next council meeting, but we're going to do a sort of a round robin of uh, asking you questions. And then at the end, you'll okay. get to ask us questions, which is great. Uh, and uh, so we'll just go ahead and start off with Linda Rhodes and her mic is off. On, rather. It's on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. Hines, very much for applying for the position. And I show that you're applying for the Parks and Rec Board. Is that correct? Yes, it is. 
what drew you to apply for that uh, particular board? I just, I see them. I, when I go to the park, I see, you know, they have that back half, it's another park. It's like nothing's been, mm -hmm. it's in, not in use. It's, I see, you know, more use could be done with that. And just want to, you know, really get out and help more in the community. I've been here, living here for nine years. Just want to get out and, you know, start doing stuff for the community. Nine years, very good. Um, yeah, you're referring to the back part. Is that where the uh, ball fields are? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. At one time, that was a, a little thriving area, but yes, it is, um, unfortunately, in the condition that it's in today, um, definitely needs some attention and some love. Uh, yes. Appreciate you applying for that. And um, just one other little comment, some of our boards have alternate positions as well as the regular membership. And if the council appointed a person to the alternate position, they just need to be aware that that position is just as important as the regular voting member is. Okay. okay. All right. Well, okay. thank you so much. All right. We're going to go over to okay. our resident firefighter because you can tell he has a fire hydrant light behind him. Uh, Josh. <clears throat> I'd just like to end, I appreciate you taking interest in, in wanting to be on one of these boards. And, uh, uh, no problem. Uh -huh. um, you know, of course, with parks and development, you need money to do that. So uh, we're kind of hurting in that area. But uh, right. Uh, what What are your thoughts on the baseball fields over there, if you don't mind me asking? Like, well, my thoughts on the baseball field, uh, a lot of because, you know, a lot of you know people that some of them people don't you know the little kids they may take them to like Mansfield or Arlington to play baseball and that's fine I understand that but maybe we can use it to turn it into maybe tennis court or basketball court because really the only basketball court tennis court here you have to go to the middle school or you have to go all the way out to the high school just to play tennis and sometimes they those are closed so you really can't get on the court. Yeah. Well, we do have a park that has a basketball court, so uh, uh -huh. right off Stublet. I didn't know if you knew that or not, but do you have any yeah. children? Oh yes, I have. Well, I have three children, but one is going to graduate from high school, another two are in college. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, like I said, I appreciate you uh, wanting to be on one of these boards and uh, taking the time to talk with us. I don't have any more questions. All right. Well, then I'll get it over to our member, Kim Chad Wondell. Thank you again. Uh, just like everybody said, thank you for your application. Uh, it, it takes uh, all kinds to make our city great. And, and that's what this is about is getting all kinds in here and, and getting fresh ideas and fresh viewpoints. Uh, and with that, uh, if money were no object, what would you change about our park system? I would make this have more family oriented. I know, you know, during the summertime, the Texas heat, I would probably put covers over some of the playgrounds so the kids could play on it. Because, you know, during the heat of the day, well, you really can't get them because it's hot. But if you put some kind of like a tarp or something over the that they can get in, and then maybe have, maybe make the little water spot, the water field down there to water. Maybe maybe have more water features with them. Excellent. And then, and probably adding, you know, maybe one or some or something. Just have a you know, community picnic. You know, get everybody together. All right. Appreciate your answer. Uh -huh. I I think uh, Cody, have you have you read our parks master plan? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, I, you know, that'd be my, one of my first stopping points uh, here is to go okay. over online and read the parks master plan. And okay. I, I also think George maybe can help me here. Didn't we try to budget at one point recently to get covers on the playgrounds for those hot summer days? Uh -huh. I don't remember. I, I know Larry's on the line, I think, and he might recall. I know we used some of our park funding a year and a half ago to do a number of projects, but I'm not sure whether covers was one or not. Larry, do you remember? 
Um, in your bond package, you have park shade structures, which would be for some playground areas. Uh, so yeah, you're on the right track then. Um, okay. But uh, so do you have any questions for us? Well, no, I would just, uh, you know, if I'm elected, get, you know, to get on, I'm just looking forward to, you know, working with each and every one because, you know, I, I would give, you know, 100% of my time and, you know, try to do everything I can to, you know, be better with, in the community. Well, I will tell you for the the entire council, we're we're tickled pink that you that you're you're out here to volunteer and help us out, and um, we're we're so happy you applied. But we will make our decision here in two weeks, and hopefully we'll be seeing okay. you on the board. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Next bye. we have Alex Daniels. Alex. Uh, yeah. How you doing, sir? That's fine, Alex. Um, so let me give you sort of a heads up. Uh, uh, by the way, also a nice room. I like the color uh, coordination. <laughs> it's very nice. Um, we will uh, do a sort of a round robin interview with each of the council members. Um, then you'll get a chance to ask us questions. And then uh, we will make appointments uh, here in about two weeks at the regular council meeting. And, and have I talked to you before, Alex? I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, just I, I've, I've been here. I just moved here about two and a half years ago, sir. Okay. So we'll get started. Uh, we'll start with um, uh, Josh this time. Hey, Mr. Daniels. Uh, thank you for applying. Uh, I see on here, uh, it looks like you're wanting to be on the PNZ and the EDC. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, do you feel drawn towards one or the other? Or? Uh, I think some of my experience uh, from the military side, I think I, I think that's where I can do the most uh, support. Um, economic, I, I've helped raise a lot of money fundraising as far as uh, programs for the military, uh, like First Class Association. Um, I have some new ideas that I think that I could help with. Yeah. Um, planning and zoning, I, I plan, I, obviously I retired and I'm wanting to stay here for a long time. This is where I grew up in Kansas and there, there wasn't a lot there. So when I had the opportunity, I couldn't believe that I got orders to Texas. So as soon as I got a chance and I fell in love with Kennedale on the first chance when I was doing my home search and this is, they're going to bury me here because I don't, I don't only really, want to stay here. And I think there's some ideas, um, but I'd like to learn more about the community. So I am kind of, I kind of have an unbiased feel. I, there's a lot I have to learn. But uh, uh, the 31st of uh, December was my last day in the Navy. So uh, if I have the opportunity, I, I think I would like to go 100, 100 miles an hour for the city and stay here and learn a lot and build and grow some things out here. Well, first, thank you for your service. I appreciate it. Uh, for, uh, for everyone in this panel, it was worth it every, every day of it. And that's the way uh, I wouldn't change a thing. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Um, two things real quick. You said you had some great uh visions and stuff i'd like kind of like to know what those are as far as the the direction our city is going in now do you do you like the direction that we're going do you uh do you want to see some other businesses um i think i'm still learning a lot on the city i i still we have that small town country feel to it but i think there's ways that we might be able to um make those strengths stronger and bring more money in I know some things aren't going to work because we are surrounded by Fort Worth and, and Dallas. And I didn't understand that when I first got here and I have talked to a few people. Uh, I'm not, it's not that I'm not a listening ear. So I'm not somebody that's going to be, that'll shoot down other ideas, but um, I have seen some things work in other, um, you know, communities as far as the military, but uh I think, um, well, I actually helped raise uh, $50,000, $60,000 through the First Class Association. We, we did fundraisers to bring money in. So I think the catalyst for putting programs together, I think that uh, I've had that experience before. I think I can do that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to change. I, I think the, the country feel of Kennedale is what holds the most value. And I, but I think we can make that grow and and add put more money in our pocket to uh, you know put back to the community. I think that's where we can maximize our dollars. 
All right. Well, thank you. Sir. That's all I got. All right. Linda. Thank you for your service, first off. Thank and you, thank you for applying for a board position. Um, appreciate that. And uh, kind of eager to, to hear some of your ideas, some more of your ideas. And one of your comments you made that uh, you try to have an open ear. That's very important, very important to have on either one of these boards. Um, another thing is just a, a comment that we've been trying to, you know, convey is there are some alternate positions on some of these boards. And if council appoints you to, let's say an alternate position, not to think that that's any less value than a regular member because they're all very valuable. You don't know at one point to the next to where you might be moved up to, a, or a person might be moved up from an alternate to a regular voting member. Um, you still have the same you know, input opportunities, just uh, the voting would be the main difference there. Yes, ma'am, I understand. Okay. Yeah, and I'm okay with that. Okay, very good. Well, thanks again and uh, look forward to working with you. All right, thank you again, ma'am. All right, then that brings us to our Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Chad Wondell. Uh, just kind of to echo the, the comments so far, uh, one, thank you for your service um, and, and your open-mindedness to want to continue to serve even after you've uh, done, <laughs> done your deed. Uh, that, that takes a lot, you know. Um, we have a lot of military in our family and the, the sacrifice is real. So thank you for everything you have sacrificed. Uh, oh, it's, it's really good to finally not have to move every three years. And it's just, now I can really be invested in the community I'm staying at. Uh, I've, I've been on the East Coast, uh, in Virginia, California. Uh, my last duty station was California. So I was ecstatic to come to Texas. I, <laughs> California is good to visit, but I, oh, what a blessing to come to Texas. <laughs> I find that to be true everything West. It's, it's fun to visit, but I got to get home. <laughs> well, I, I have a lot of shipmates that are ready to leave California. Uh, yeah. Some of them that are that grew up there were born there, and they, you know, California is a large exodus out there. They're they're coming here. <laughs> well, it's Texas. You can't beat it. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so I know you're you're primarily focused at PNZ level. Um, have you done anything in uh, the planning and zoning kind of stuff, even with the military base planning, uh, anything like that? Uh, I did some certifications in the Navy where uh, we've planned. Um, I did one of the biggest things that I did on the very last uh, duty when I was out to sea before I came here. Uh, I certified three carriers with uh, fire certification. Uh, we had to do a lot of testing, get qualified, certified to go on deployment, and that meant training and teaching at least four thousand people per ship. Mm -hmm. So it's like a lot of continuous planning, a lot of weekly meetings. Uh, we put th all three of those carriers went through a maintenance phase where they were shut down. And we went through a scheduled timeline of what had to be repaired. And it's, um, it's a lot of management of where you're putting your people, uh, managing the timeline, the budget of what you can use, how much you can get swapped out and uh, collaborating in that timeline because eventually they're gonna cut you off and they're like, you can't, we're, we're out of funds. And what is, you know, try to minimize your rework. I've did quite a bit of that in the last three years. Uh, I got recognized with a, a Navy uh, a co a commendation, which is not an award that you normally get at my rank. I retired as an E6. You normally get that uh, award as an E7. Uh, it meant a lot to me. I spent a lot of hours. You can ask my wife. She's, <laughs> she's excited that I'm not, uh, <laughs> I can be home a little bit more, but um, it, it meant a lot to me. And I'd like to take that, translate it to the community. I, I realize that it's volunteer work, but with not having to move every three years, it's, it's I'm home now, and this is where I want to stay. A um, lot of hours, a lot of investigative, a lot of uh, inputs. Uh, it requires that, and it, and this kind of work I think needs it too. You got to have somebody that's want to be dedicated to it, and and it means a lot to me. Excellent. Well, I'll just say your first homework assignment is to go. Uh, and look at our UDC code and start familiarizing yourself with our comprehensive plan and our zoning. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, sir. I will. All right. So uh, now I guess it's left for any questions for us. Uh, no, I'm really kind of, uh, I, I took some notes, but I, I, 
just trying to express that uh, I, I want to show an unbiased opinion. I know that uh, the community has got a lot of voices and some people, uh, it may be negative, it may be positive, but uh, I think my I can be an asset to help out. I'm not here to take over anything. Uh, I'm not ready. I'm not trying to push anyone out. I want to be that helping hand um, to be to be that asset to make progress. Um, I have five kids. My two oldest are uh, college age, but I have three in school right now here in Kennedale District, and uh, that that future is also important for them. So uh, what I do now is is, is going to set some you know, uh, pavers, some stones for their path the rest of the way. And maybe they can be part of the community also. Well, what we will ask for you is that if we appoint you to a board, give us your best judgment and your honest opinion. That's all we can ask from you. I appreciate it very much. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you for applying again. And we'll be making our appointments here in about two weeks. Yes, sir. I, um, I'm excited. I hope I get to hear some. All right. Thank you. Uh, Y'all have a good new year. <laughs> all right, good night. All right, have a good night, sir. Thank you. Okay, Rosie, do we have somebody? Yes, and the final one is Kimberly Courtney. She's on now. Hi, right, Kimberly. Hey, how are you? I don't think you can see me. I'm in the car. <laughs> well, that's okay, as long as you're not driving. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, let me just say, we'll be doing our actual appointments. Nice, just interviews. We'll be doing actual appointments here in about two weeks. Um, and then uh, what we'll do is uh, we're going to go sort of a round robin uh, council members asking you questions and then at the end you'll be able to uh, ask us questions if you have any questions that we can uh, clarify for you. Absolutely, so, lovely. We'll start off with uh, Linda Rhodes. Hello, thank you for applying. Hey, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Okay, so the the first okay. thing I'm going to say is you guys don't know me by my name. You, you, I have been remarried recently. My new name is Courtney. My old married name that you might or might know me by is Kimberly Evans. So I've been a member of Kennedale for a long time, but my new name may throw you. <laughs> I know all of y'all. However, you may not know me, and it doesn't help at all that you can't see me. Are you related? To, are you related to Terry Evans? Terry Evans is my ex-husband. Okay, and then Butch. And Butch is my ex-father-in-law. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. And Brian, if you could see me, you would know who I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we'll we'll get with Linda, uh, and she can ask her questions. I, I yes, ma'am. Okay. I noticed on your application that you have earned the title of Tarrant County Master Gardener. Yes, ma'am. Could you elaborate on that, please? Um, so I am not currently active in the Master Gardener program just because, dang, I am busy <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and I have a million things going. However, I loved my Master Gardener experience. I still have many friends in the Master Gardener um, Association, Wilda Turner being one of them. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it seems, it feels to me like if I'm going to dedicate my time, I need to do it more locally. So that's why I'm applying to be part of the KKB. And I have volunteered for the KKB in the past, but if it's not an obligation, I have a tendency to not do it. <laughs> um, however, if I feel obligated, I'm much more able much more if it's on my calendar i show up more often than if it's an if it's a choice you get if you're on the board there that's an incentive to get out there so absolutely with, with you volunteering <laughs> and you also know wilda i'm sure you know it's definitely all hands-on absolutely i have volunteered several times for the kkb i've planted a couple of trees i've worked in the wildflower garden i've picked up trash i have awesome. done some things i'm just not as consistent as I would like to be. <laughs> well, thank you again for applying. Thank you. All right, uh, then we'll go to Josh. Sorry, I changed my screen up. I I think we all know where we're going to put her, so uh, <laughs> I really don't have to 
Yeah, I only fit, I only really fit one place, so yeah. <laughs> You're muted. Any I said, I questions hope, for me, sir? I hope you enjoy it, and thank you for uh, volunteering. We appreciate it. Thank you. Right, thank you for us, your service. That leaves us with uh, our Mayor Pro Tem, Chad Wandell. Uh, I'd just like to say, again, you know, echoing everybody, thank you for applying and wanting to volunteer and, and taking uh, part in ownership of our city. Um, I can already tell by who you know and that you've done this before that I don't have to give you my just a, what are you in for and the, the dirty the dirty <laughs> club spiel because you know you're going to get your hands dirty um, and you know been gay for the back tiling off for the shoulder. <laughs> Absolutely yeah I'm getting a little older it hurts a little more these days. But it's so worth it the reward on the other side of that is so wonderful so uh, again I, I don't really have a question for you that's usually what I just want to do is set expectations with people that go into the KKB that they understand that it's a uh, it's not a traditional let's sit down and discuss some stuff it's we're going to talk about this over a glass of sweet tea and a tree <laughs> right and a so. tree which is 400 pounds absolutely yep. I understand that perfect that's that's all I needed to know lovely all right so any questions for us um, I do not um, have any questions. I'm really glad y'all didn't answer, ask any questions about the city charter because I haven't looked at it in several years. <laughs> it doesn't change really a whole lot. Right, so I read it like um, four years ago and I haven't read it since. Um, but other than that, I feel, um, you know, I, I love the town I live in and I'm glad to be a part of it. Well, we certainly appreciate you applying and we'll make our, uh, our uh, choices here in two weeks. And I think Josh pretty much said, summed it up uh, right. We know where you go. We know where you go. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. Is that everybody, Rosie? Yes, sir. I, I just want to make a real quick announcement before we adjourn. Uh, Carol Williamson's husband died today. Uh, oh, dang. I, I think a lot of you know uh, Carolyn. She used to serve on the PNZ. She's Vera Coker's daughter. And her husband, Ken, passed away today, and uh, we need to keep her in our thoughts. So, uh, and if you want to reach out to her, uh, feel free to do so. I know a lot of you have known her for a long time. All right, with that, uh, no more interviews, then um, you've got all your information. Be ready to appoint at the next uh, council meeting. We'll hopefully we'll have uh, Gary back uh, and with us so he can uh, participate in the deliberations. All right. Then I guess I need a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Same by uh -huh. Josh. Uh, I'll just do a real quick roll call. Josh, yay or nay? Yay. Uh, Linda, yay. And then Chad from DC. Affirmative. Affirmative. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for the great questions and uh, the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>